How are you doing? It's Ryan with 1075. We're going over Stamford, Connecticut's new Deputy Chief's Shifts Commander's vehicle. We have Whalen's core system controlling everything on the vehicle. We've got a dual color Liberty 2 light bar, Satina PB450, custom ordered to have uh, six ions in the front, one eye on each side, dual color. Uh, we're currently in Park Kill. Some of the customization that we've done to the front, LED upgrades on the headlights and fog lights with a headlight flasher to give them extra warning. And then we have a custom front license plate. Uh, we made it so that it lights up. It's got a frosted lens behind it. We've got actually three siren speakers in it, one for each of the core amps. And then we also have a uh, federal signal EQ2B in the vehicle. We have Hella Heroes in the front turn signals. They did all their graphics work on it, dual color, TI on, custom made badging for them. Light up flag, it can also flash with the control system. They did their patch. We have dual color tracers under the doors um, all around the vehicle. We have a technique ground lighting that comes on with the park light features. Uh, we tinted the front windows for them. Looking at the cap area, we have four Whalen T-ions on the side. Up top, we have them on our wedges to level the light out so that they're angled correctly. From the outside, it looks like a regular ARE DCU cap. But what we've done for them is we custom made the toolboxes for them. And then what we've also done is they're going to be using uh, this side and the other side for turnout gear storage. So we added paint protective film to the side of the fender. And then we also custom made some uh, rollout covers that drop down to help protect the fender when they're throwing their packs in and out and whatnot. Just a little extra touch for them. So what we've done is we ordered the cap as a regular ARE cap with no toolboxes. We basically designed around what equipment that they wanted to be able to store back here. We brought in fire tech compartment lighting all tied into the pin switches. So this is a combination of uh, eighth inch and 3 16 aluminum that we custom cut and welded in house. Gave them an adjustable track system to move the divider. So it's basically mirrored on both sides. Electronics access to get into the fuse panel and stuff that's underneath it. They've got their pack tracker mounted. What we've done is we brought in Blue Seas fuse panels in both compartments, giving them um, 12 volt ignition and ground studs. Uh, to keep everything centralized. 110 power that's tied into the inverter battery charger system. And then we have quick 12 volt uh, USB outlets. Taking a look at the back, we've got Whalen ions in tricolor all around the back. So we have a combination up top of red, amber, white, or blue, amber, white. So these all do white scene, uh, amber arrow, and then they have the flashing red and blue, a little amber. These are all these here ions are three color. So they're red, blue, and white all do the scene function also. With the hatch up, uh, Technique strip light added to help illuminate the area down here. We have our uh, vertically challenged people assist strap as we've been adding on. What we also do is a little step is we painted a lot of the spots of where you take the hatch apart. So when you take all your hatch mounting hardware off, it leaves a lot of unpainted areas. Uh, we went through and painted everything for them to match the body color. And then what we've done ahead of making sure that the bed is sealed was we've added extra gasketing along the bed spot here, along the bottom. We bolted the bottom of the cap to it, added gasketing here, and we actually went through and sealed the entire bed with silicone. We've got a little indicator here for our electric slide master control. We've got our power distribution on one side and then we have our inverter control system. So they came to us when designing the cap and designed a instant command module for them um, that basically checked all the boxes for them. So they wanted three touchscreen monitors. So we've got two duplicates on either side. This one is tied into a computer in here. The other one on the other side is tied into the tablet mount that's in the passenger side tool compartment. And this is tied into the other computer that's inside of it. So they have 
three screens to use at a, a larger incident. Uh, this is the bigger one, which is the main screen. We've got a radio faceplate. They're gonna be adding another radio down the line. So we did a pre-cut for them. A little tiny whiteboard just to take up some of that space. They've got pull-out tray. And then they have their portable incident command board that they normally use for the regular incidents. And then on the sides with the computer monitors, we added in on both sides. They've got little whiteboards so they can flip those up, use that whiteboard, use this one. Then on the other side, some more storage type stuff. So as we said, this monitor is tied into the tablet dock that in, is in here. We have another whiteboard, like we said. And then we have two other additional drawers. So they requested a file drawer. So we were able to do um, a front to back file drawer, meaning that the rails are on the front and back of the drawer now, instead of running the length, giving you some file drawer storage. And then while it's still up there a little tall, other incidentals drawer. And then along the back, uh, we utilize this to mount their portable lift up tent so they can get to it when they need to, out of the way, still serves a purpose, uses the space that's there. And then we have the, uh, the electric slide master, which is a nice feature for an incident module like this. And then you can see inside when the cap's out, the additional scene lighting that's in there. And this is all controlled through the core system, through the pin switch. So we can put our cabinet back in. Tucks away nicely, all set. You can still use everything back here without the need to um, pull out the command module in order to use it. Still have a whiteboard, still have the screen. All the monitors are touchscreen and outdoor monitors. So they have a sunlight readable technology. So it'll be a lot easier to see them during the day. It's not like just adding a regular TV screen to it. It's actually meant to be outdoors and into the elements. Passenger side of the vehicle, you can see we have our auto eject with an indicator. This side's got a little bit more going on. They, they mounted their uh, helmet mounts, we've got our power distribution, we've got the tablet dock, portable chargers, Knox box, flashlights. Um, this is where their gear is gonna go, so they have another roll out here. You can kinda not see, but kinda see the paint protectant film on it. And then you can see the other strip lights that are up here to light up the area. Uh, our pin switches are tied into our core system, so they're not just turning on the lights, but they are giving us the ability to uh, interpret that signal. So we're able to put like a compartment door indicator or anything else that you'd want to um, control by that pin switch, such as a warning light or the compartment lighting. So taking a look at the under seat electronics compartment that we made for them. So the big features of where most of our electronics are, where our distribution is, we've got our um, core system with our external amplifiers. We've got our fuse panels. Uh, we've got our cradle point modem and our cradle point modem's got outputs up to our front docking station and then also leads into the back cabinet with another distribution panel for that so that the computers back there can have power. We've got their Futurecom repeater system along with their Apex chassis. You can see the EQ2B brain, uh, the tracer amps, and one thing with the cradle point modem is we have the very large antenna on the roof. So what we did to properly mount it was we fabricated a panel out of aluminum to uh, bridge the gaps of the ribs, painted it to match the truck. So it gives it a very nice appearance when you look up there. It's just not a piece of aluminum mounted to the roof. Uh, back of their console, they've got additional portable chargers for themselves. So taking a look at the interior front area, starting up top, we've got our speakers mounted to the headliner. Uh, flush mounted with our speaker brackets. We've got a whale and six inch interior compartment light. We brought our upfitter switches into the core so they can have additional functions. Went ahead and made some uh, label panels for the switches for them so they know what they're doing. Laptop mount from Havis with a keyboard. We have a hint mount mounted to the side. Padded lift up armrest. And then we have our 12 volt USB panel. We've reintegrated the factory ports into the console our two Apex radios, our core control and our EQ2B control panel. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is we branded the control panel for them. So it says custom built for Stanford Fire. It's got their seal that matches the door. Just a nice little other touch that we did to uh, tie everything in and on the vehicle. We have an OS light mounted up top. 
Uh, that's their compartment door indicator, so you can program it to do things like such as steady on when you're in park, so it's not blinding or anything like that. And then when you're in drive, it can flash. It can do all kinds of different patterns, just like the rest of the lights do. Okay, so we're looking at our drive response mode. One thing about the Stanford Fire Department is their mechanics are fantastic, and they've actually already upgraded a few of their trucks to have a core system in it. So this has the V2V sync system in it that actually will uh, sync up with their fire trucks and their flash patterns. So they're basing the patterns on this around that. Uh, so it's got the DVI um, already set up to do at night and park and all that, um, which they're working on fine tuning. But you can see we have our white flashing, our white in our push bumper, our white on our sides and on our tracers is flashing. Um, just all working on programming to get it up to uh, matching the rest of the fleet. And we have a, another one of these trucks on order. So we'd like to thank the Stanford Fire Department for their confidence in us to build a completely customized incident command vehicle to suit their needs.